Hey guys, and welcome back to this recent linen channel. I'm Janelle, and today I'm gonna show you how to do this hand tufted texture using raya knots and trimming it later. This is also sometimes called a Gjord's knot or a Turkish knot, but essentially it's like a rug making technique and it adds this really cool texture and you can do all kinds of things with it. So let's get started. This video is brought to you by the Spruce and Linen Shop where you can find weaving kits, tools, materials, and supplies. Link in the description box below. There are a ton of different ways that you can use this technique, just like most of the texture techniques that we've talked about on this channel. Um, but I'm gonna show you within a square. So you could do a square, a circle, any shape. You could do an organic shape. You could use it in a stripe. You could use, just do tiny little sections within your beavings. The possibilities are endless. Um, but I'm gonna show you this nice little square. So what I've done here is I've just put my cardboard in and I just use plain weave to start framing out a square or like rectangle shape here and I'll close it off later. So, and I'm gonna be using black and white yarn here so that I get kind of like a speckled um, look. And there's a few different ways that you can do this Raya knot, Turkish knot, Gjord's knot, which is all the same thing. It's just essentially like a carpet knot, but instead of using this Raya knot for our fringe, we're just using it for this little texture. So again, I've just got a few strands of worsted weight yarn. I'm just using black and white, and I have multiple strands here as you can see, because I wanna show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. So if you happen to have multiple balls of this yarn that you're using, you can use um, a really cool technique where you don't actually have to cut this um, until you've tied your knot or you can do and I'll show you that first you can just use a typical Raya knot where you are working on two strings and I'm gonna go take that right string up and go back and around and then the left string and back and around and then you're gonna tighten that up and pull it down so the biggest thing with this technique is that you want to pack this all super tight so that we really get a nice dense area of this texture and you won't see through your warp. So that's just like a typical Raya knot that you use for fringe and you can do it that way. But if you do have multiple balls of the yarn that you're wanting to use for this, I'm going to show you another knot. And I think I'm gonna show you with this thicker yarn first just so that you can see it a little better here. So for this, it's the exact same knot, but it's a way to not have to pre-cut all your little pieces, which will save you on yarn because you'll see later, um, I'm gonna have to cut quite a bit of this off, but when you do the other technique, you won't have to cut quite as much off. Working on two strings, you're gonna take the end of your yarn, go through the middle and around, and then you're gonna go over the left string and underneath and pull it tight. And it's the exact same knot, but you'll see here, when you do it this way, you can really pull that end short and then you can cut off this end nice and short as well. And we will still trim these up later to be even shorter, but you can see how much yarn you'll save by doing it this way. So I'll show you one more time here. You're gonna go through the middle and around. Then this piece can come over here and then you're gonna go over the left string and back through the middle. And there you can see we've got our little Raya knot and you can pull that down. So that's a way that you can do this knot without having to kind of pre-cut a bunch of strands. Um, however, if you only had a single strand of this available, then you'd probably want to pre-cut this in pieces. So basically the concept of this technique is you're going to do a row of your little Raya knots and then you're gonna do one or two rows of plain weave and continue on, and you wanna really squish it down. So let's do that together a couple of times. And I'm just gonna trim these all the same length. So again, we're going on our right string through the middle and around, and then over and back through the middle. And then I'm just kind of tightening that up so it can be nice and short and trimming off the excess. 
So you can continue doing that for a whole row. Now that I have one row of those knots, I'm gonna go in with plain weave and I'm gonna do two rows. And this is just basically to tack down that row of Ryan knots. And again, squishing that down nice and tight so that it's really dense. And I'm just gonna let this piece of yarn stay there and I'm gonna continue to do that process. So I have my second row of my Raya knots there, again, continuously just squishing that down. And now I'm going to go back in with some plain weave. So in this case, and it's just something I thought of now, for an actual wall hanging, um, you'd probably wanna connect these sides to this in some way. So every once in a while, I'm gonna go through one of the strings in this section and just kind of connect it with this Raya section. Just so that we're keeping everything together and there won't be big gaps if you took this off the loom. So before you connect this plain weave with this side, you really want to make sure you're squished down as much as you want to be before connecting it. So you connect it in the right place because we don't want to squish this part down the way that we're squishing this part down. knots I want done I'm just gonna go ahead and do a few more rows of plain weave above this now we're ready to start trimming all of these little fluffy bits and I'm just gonna kind of comb it out to try to get it to be sticking out as much as I can and then just carefully I'm going to start trimming it so this is where having a really nice sharp pair of scissors is handy so there's a few different ways that you can do this you can um, trim it all really flat so it's kind of sticking straight up from all sides you can create a bit of a curve and it's really whatever you like you do you I'm just gonna start trimming and see see what I'm feeling like I want it to be I think I'm gonna start just by trimming it like straight straight across here excuse my squeaky scissors but again this is a lot easier to do when your scissors are nice and sharp Now you can leave this as long or as short as you like. So there gives you a bit of a sense of how long mine is. It's like maybe an inch and I'll probably be cutting it shorter and shorter. So you can even turn your loom on the side and trim it like this. Now you could always steam out this fringe as well so that it's sitting a little bit straighter. I think I'm just gonna have mine curve over a bit more. You can really start to see that fluffy texture and because I used two different colors, it's like quite speckled. 
this process is quite messy, so you kind of want to just keep making sure all those little bits are off of your weaving. And because we've packed everything so nice and tight, even if you trim these quite short, they're very unlikely to fall out because we've tacked everything down, we've packed it really tight, so there's not really anywhere for it to go. Now, of course, like everything, as I always say, you do you. So like, if you like the bit of unruliness and unevenness, you can see that like mine's not all the way flat yet. If you like that look, that is totally fine. I think this is yet another one of those techniques that there's just so many different ways that you can go about it. So you can do kind of more an organic look where it's a bit more uneven and providing kind of different layers and levels, which would bring a lot of depth to your piece. Or you can kind of do what I'm doing and I'm just trying to get it like really nice and smooth all the way around. And this is where you might want a lint roller as well. And I'm just gonna continuously try to get some of this yarn dust out of the way of my weaving. I just put on a few rows of plain weave here just to show you how this looks kind of within that space. And you can see how it would be really fun to do all kinds of shapes like this. But like I said, you can use any different shape. You could use stripes. You could just do little tufts here and there within your weaving, um, organic shapes. There's so much you can do with this and you can really play with the texture and color using multiple strings, multiple colors. You could use different thicknesses of yarn. Like as you can see, once again, like the possibilities are really endless. I'm loving this like black and white speckled look, but I think it would be really beautiful with like a chunky yarn in there. There's all different kinds of things you can do with this. All right, you guys, so here is that hand tufted trimmed Raya look. I'm loving this texture. It's so much fun. And if you try out this tutorial, make sure you tag me on Instagram and you can also use hashtag SL Weaving Club. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Rye knot, we're kind of using those terms in, in, what? Uh, okay. Texture and add that. So that's how you can create this same knot without having to cut a ton of your little bits.